Well, good morning. Um, as I said, I'm from San Francisco, and this is a project that we've been working on for almost 15 years. Um, if you have any questions or you want to go back and review it, there's a website, betablockerprotocol.com, which has all these slides, um, has some CME material, some tests. You can show it to people. Um, if there's anything you need added to it or have a question, send me an email and I can help you. Um, I've answered lots of questions about this. Um, so disclosure, uh, no financial interest in the medications or therapies. I'm going to discuss off-label use of FDA-approved medications. And I'll admit that I'm opinionated. So the goals and objectives. First, how do you implement, how do you uh, deal with perioperative beta blockers? Uh, what is this issue? And then a second line, how do you implement this system? If I come out and I develop something for you, and I don't show you how to implement it, it has very little effect. And then now that ESIP is coming out, we're going to talk a little bit about how do you evaluate this system. So it's three levels of talks. The perioperative beta blocker issue, how do you implement perioperative beta blockers, and then how do you study this issue? Okay, these are the investigators. Uh, we have some cardiologists from VA Palo Alto in San Francisco, um, computer specialists, um, and also we're working with Kaiser um, to do this. Next. So uh, previously we've assisted about 90 hospitals in implementing perioperative beta blocker programs. Uh, we're in the process of helping Kaiser set this up. They're going to have 1.2 million operations per year involved. And I would like to get the whole VA to implement this project. We haven't quite gotten there yet, but that's another 370,000 operations a year. So what's my philosophy? Well, first, the correct path should be the easiest one. If I come up with something very, very complicated, you'll never be able to do it. Secondly, keep it really simple, test it a lot, and then check to make sure it really works. If somebody comes up with a protocol and they don't actually test it, you don't know that it's working. You can't really make sure that it's doing what you expect. Thanks. Um, clinical research, which is published and adapted into standards of care, has very little effect without some sort of implementation methodology. Um, you need an optimal system. You need a practical system and time and money, and it needs to be sustainable. Um, what we've done so far to date, we've done the randomized trials. We're going to talk about that today. They've been published. These randomized trials were implemented into clinical guidelines, so level one and level two standards of care. They've been published. We've educated people about it. We've come up with implementation strategies. And now we have to actually change physician behavior and change patient outcome. And we've done this in San Francisco and some other centers, and I'll show you that data later on. You'd like to ultimately see an association between the outcomes. Now, what are we talking about? We're talking about perioperative cardiac morbidity, and we've lumped these together, cardiac death, myocardial infarction, unstable angina, heart failure, and life-threatening dysrhythmias. The reason we lump it together is it allows us to have an outcome variable that's high enough that you 